tell you the chance let's do this two of the best 13 inch premium sort of laptops you're gonna get these are the two right macbook pro 13 xps 13 two in one important this is the two in one because hey we have mr penny over here that gives the xps a bit more on its arsenal i think everybody's praise of the m1 max is very justified and wow they're amazing so which one's better for you which one's the king or queen i don't care let's find out so i do apologize for the quick brevity of this review because i've been driving back and forth to hospital all week and i'm a bit pushed for time but yeah you're gonna know everything you need to know so when it comes to price between these two i'll leave a link in the description to the prices of these two there's not much difference between them once you sort of spec them up to the same sort of specs so i don't think anyone's a winner here specs m1 16 gigabytes ram the latest 11th generation intel cpu evo certified lpddr4x and the specific model of the cpu is the 1165g7 i have actually tested the 1185g7 against this doesn't matter but look at them they're both beautiful devices i think the mac looks better from the outside if you you know you close it or whatever but i mean look at that your laptop will look like this one day and believe me out of all the XPSs, this one has the biggest bezels. And yeah, I mean, Apple have gone for something familiar. And the reason the bezels are a little bit bigger on this XPS 13 2 and one is because it is a 2 and one because of the hinge, etc. So if you got the normal XPS 13, the bezels would even be smaller, like it's virtually bezel-less. So pick your poison. I don't know which one you like better, but this one does look more modern, the XPS 13. The build quality on both of them is superb. You know, look at this carbon fiber finish there. They're both CNC machined aluminium or aluminum. Top quality stuff there. Now, when it comes to size and weight, this one is smaller. It's more compact. It's a little bit lighter. It's easier to carry around. The MacBook Pro 13, it's not the lightest Ultrabooks. Like, for example, the MacBook Air is obviously lighter, but it's no heavyweight. It's what you'd expect, that sort of three pound mark. And this is a little bit under there. Now, for ports, this has two Thunderbolts. They don't specify three or four, but they're two Thunderbolt ports. They're on the left hand side only. This has two Thunderbolt 4s. That's Evo certified, has to be Thunderbolt 4, has to have nine hours battery life, has to have the instant wake and resume. That's what an Evo laptop is. So two Thunderbolt 4s, which is basically like Apple's Thunderbolt 3 anyway, because Apple's Thunderbolt 3 had everything implemented, which is basically what Thunderbolt 4 is. But this does have a micro SD card, which can be used for storage. So that's sort of handy. The MacBook Pro's ports are USB 4.0 as well, which Thunderbolt 4 is as well. But this thing here, this Orica portable SSD, right? This is amazing. It's the size of a thumb drive, right? And you get like 900 megabytes per second read and write sort of thing. I mean, look how small it is, right? Much better than all the other like SATA based SSDs. Let me show you something. Now, I made a video, a couple of videos back, so you might want to check it out. It says, do not do this on your M1 Mac um, or your Toast. You're done. All right, so we've got an SSD there. It's supposed to be 900 reads and writes, right? And it is. I can guarantee you that. I put it on my iMac. It is 900 reads and writes, and I put it on the PC. Same sort of thing, right? So let's do it on this. And if you can't see that, that's 490 write. And we're going to see the reads now going to be a little bit faster and it's about 515 read right supposed to be 900 megabytes read and write by the way i'll leave a link in the description to this it's amazing you want to get one there's something weird with the usbs on these things i don't know what it is i've tested other hard drives as well they're not full speed this is 400 megabytes per second short of what it should be and in that video I made about do not do this on your M1 Mac, like going into recovery and, you know, eventually you're going to have to install a new operating system if you want it to run smoothly. Check out that video. A lot of people in the comments are saying it's because the USB, it just doesn't work with certain USBs. Even Apple's USBs aren't working with it properly. It's not being able to boot to the USBs. I don't know what's going on with the USBs, whether it can be fixed or whether just whatever they're using in there just only like certain types of USBs to run full speed or even work properly. It's just, I don't know. What can I tell you? We'll have to wait and see on that front. All right, the sound of this is decent. It's good. This is better, all right? This is top quality, best probably Ultrabook you're going to get. Keyboard and trackpad, similar sort of thing, right? I've got to say, 
trackpad on the Mac is always the best. This is good trackpad, no worries about this. Glass, nice response. But this keyboard, it actually feels like the butterfly keyboard. You either like that or you hate it, but it does feel a little bit shallow. I do like the Mac keyboard, but some people may say it feels a bit loosey-goosey compared to how tight that is. And you like them tight, don't you? So it's gonna be a bit personal preference there. Now, battery life. This thing is like class leading. You're gonna get, what, 16 hours battery life? Like, I've had this gun for two days, just web surfing and stuff, got 87% battery left. Battery life is amazing. Now, Evo certified. You have to have at least nine hours battery life. Good news is, because this has the full HD touch display, you're getting around that sort of battery life. You're getting over 10 hours battery life with this. So this is good battery life. They're both all day, but this is like another level for battery life. Performance. I've done many videos <laughs> comparing these for battery life performance, comparing these two CPUs along with the 4800U. Go check out my back catalog. You're gonna see in depth more, you know, how these perform. Right, so you lucky people are gonna see it first. The world exclusive shootout between the best Ultrabook silicon you can buy, AMD 4800U, Apple M1 processor in the MacBook Pro with the fan, and Intel's latest 11th generation. This is the 1165G7. Let's see which one's faster. All right, so let's do this. Three, two, one, let's go. Are we going? Are we going? Are we all going? Yes, we're all going. All right, so which one's going to win this Cinebench? Best silicon you can buy from each platform, from each vendor. AMD, oops, uh, Apple, and Intel. Let's see how hard she goes. Oh, I can hear that AMD fan cranking on. Apple silicon is silent. Oh, look at that. Look at that AMD. Just chews through the threads. Looks like the Apple Silicon's in second place here. Now, 15 watts AMD. Uh, Apple is supposed to be 10. supposed to boost a bit more. Now, the AMD can boost up to like 50 watts. Same with the Intel. So, But it does have 8 cores. The Apple has 8 cores as well. And to me, it looks like the AMD is killing it here, as you'd expect. I mean, this AMD is faster than a 9880HK. It's faster than a MacBook Pro 16 processor. I'm talking about the AMD, not the Apple Silicon. You can see in last place there, good old Intel. All right, so, ooh, it's going to be close. No, it definitely looks like the AMD is going to kill it here. AMD for the win, so... There you go, the AMD is the king. This is supposed to be native. I will test other stuff, of course. And Apple Silicon is definitely gonna destroy the Intel. I mean, it's gonna absolutely destroy the Intel. And this is multi-core, of course. And what do we have? AMD 9,676. Apple Silicon 7,820. And floppy drive speed, 56K modem, Intel, yeah. So the 11th gen Intel over here actually got 4,838. Okay, that's its multi-thread score. Well short of this and well short of this. This is actually faster than MacBook Pro 16. MacBook Pro 16, 8,999. And this one is 7,820. So it's not as fast as the MacBook Pro 16. This one is faster than the MacBook Pro 16. This one is floppy drive, but this is single thread now. And it definitely looks like Apple single thread is killing it here. All right, so now look at the Apple. Whoa, whoa, single core king. Look at that, boom, just finished there. Single core score of, what do we got? 1,508. And it looks like the Intel is beating the AMD for single core there, but they're way behind. Apple single core is just gonna kill it. Multi-core, not as good as the AMD, but um, definitely beats out that Intel. And considering the Mac it's replacing, yeah, it'll destroy that, no problems, the Intel Mac, even the 10th generation one. You can't even hear the fans on that as well. So that's one thing. I can hear the fans on the AMD the most, actually, this XPS 13. The fans aren't that loud. So have a listen. Of 
course there's going to be some sound bleed there but um yeah anyway looks like intel's going to beat the amd hear the fan listen all right she's been under full load for what five minutes or something let's have a listen Forty-two decibels, forty-three. There are some laptops like that, so it's not. Yeah, all right. It's very quiet compared to say XPS fifteen or MacBook Pro sixteen. It's about what eight decibels quieter. But I have seen other laptops around that sort of quietness. So yeah, it is good, but it's definitely you can hear the noise. So MacBook Air, if you don't want to hear noise, get a load of this. Okay, so we're doing, as you can see there, ten point four eight frames per second an average of 11 frames per second that's how fast it's rendering out this same thing go to the intel system here have a look at this it's point something of a frame 4.7 no it's point something of a frame what the hell it's going to take 20 something minutes compared to say 15 on the mac man i ain't got time to wait for this rubbish wow that is heaps slower heaps slower and it seems to be just well it looks like here, to be fair to the Intel system, it's only using 65% of the CPU, whereas this one here, you can see it's using maximum all the cores. So it's not actually, this is just handbrake how fast it is on Mac versus, yeah, PC here. Because it's not using 100%, and that's definitely using 100%. So still, whatever, it's faster. So we have Blackmagic RAW speed test here, and this will test how fast it is in DaVinci Resolve with Blackmagic RAW. Now, let's have a look here at the metal score of that. 2026 compared to floppy disk drive 74 and 67 on the AMD. So the other one was Intel. A lot faster with metal, okay? That's expected. It doesn't run native DaVinci Resolve with the Mac OS uh, Silicon Mac. So yeah, that's just how it is at the moment. I downloaded the latest one, so it's 17. It is the beta version. But if we look at CPU, you can see there Intel wins here, 86 with CPU versus 67 versus 85 volts. Basically the same as, you know, Intel and AMD are the same, but definitely that integrated GPU. But this is using metal, right? OpenCL, these things aren't made for OpenCL. Single core, very close, not much difference between them, but multi-core, this one is faster, no doubt about it. It's a fair bit faster too, but both of them are more than enough for what these laptops are designed for. They're both really good. The graphics actually is faster on the Mac, but the graphics on this XPS 13, the XE graphics, the Intel graphics, they're no slouches either. They're good graphics as well. And also QuickSync is more supported in you know a lot of stuff. So they can actually play games on both of them, but um, this one, you've got more choice of games. This one's gonna be slightly better on, you know, certain types of games if you can run them at all so upgradeability you can upgrade the m.2 in there but you can't upgrade anything on these that's it and displays both of them have awesome displays p3 100 percent this one here is the full hd touch display right you can get a 4k display that will kill your battery life but you can get a 4k display but both of the displays are really good but the ace in the hole of this is yeah it is indeed a two-in-one right so that means you have a pen and you can do all the two-in-one stuff and yeah it really is very nice uh, that's a b supposed to be like subscribe come on champs you can do it but um yeah of course you've got all that sort of stuff you've got a touch display you've got two-in-one features um yeah that's what sort of, you know, differentiates these two in some sort of way. And, you know, it's more versatile in that sort of way. And it's good for, like, you know, watching content. You can put it in the tent mode. You can put it on all those modes. It looks awesome. So, at the end of the day, which one's better out of these? Well, if you want the versatility of the two-in-one touch display and stuff like that, it's got good battery life. It's more compact. It's, you know, more modern looking. Well, here you go. That's the laptop for you. But if you want insane battery life, not that this is bad, but insane battery life, insane performance when it's optimized, anything optimized for this thing is just wow. And you, you know, you get this awesome sound, the awesome trackpad, the awesome keyboard, 
just you know stuff optimized as amazing as i just said before and you just got to watch out for quirks you know sort of things like that and apps not being native and just some like my audio interface won't work on this and you know there's things like that I, that'll get better over time but um yeah i mean let me know which one you think's better anyway thanks for watching guys i've got more to come sorry it's a bit brief but anyway catch you in the next one tally ho